Okay, direct wave tutorial. Uh, maybe. I don't know. I haven't really tried this before, but I think I know how it works. So, it's the same, kind of the same process with the sound fonts, at least in terms of getting the uh, samples ready. So, you just gotta have, like, uh, all your individual samples in a folder numbered 0 to 1, and then, like, just fucking, you know. You know, I explained it in the sound font video, and, um... I'd rather do this quickly because I gotta go to work and not too long. Yes, good decision making me. Uh, so we're back in this project and we'll be using the same vocal samples, you know, these. Sorry about that. Um, so there are two ways you can go about this. If you have a trial version, I mean, if you don't have the trial version of Elf Studio and you, like either pirated it or actually own the damn thing, uh, you can not only do this with sound fonts, but you can also do it with literally any instrument, but I'm just gonna do it with the sound font. So we have our sound font right here, and then I can just right-click the channel and create a direct wave instrument. It'll save it as a thing. I'm just gonna name this uh, BF test. Now you can have the keys per zone. Uh, I set it to one so that every note is distinct. Uh, if you want a little bit less system memory, you can do this. It won't actually sound like that, but just keep it keys per zone to one, and then uh, start that. And it's rendered. Cool. Um, so that's how you do that with sound fonts and honestly any instrument. You can do this with Slice X as well. Um, but say that you don't have the tri uh, paid version, say that you don't have, they only have the trial version of FL Studio, but you still want to make a DWP. Well, it's kind of a similar process to making a sound font, but it's like, I guess it's less clicking. Maybe it's more streamlined. I haven't, I don't have this process down, but I have it, I know how to do it, you know, and I'd rather show that off than not show anything at all. Um, so I'm going to go to where my thing was. You select the folder in which your samples are. You import those in. And uh, you're met with this. Uh, and now you're like, oh, what the hell? What the fuck? I, I don't understand what this is. But if you look at the things, you can see that there are actually some similar things with uh, the polyphone. You got the root note. Uh, you got the low key and the high key range, which is why all of this is filling it up. There's two ways you can go about this in terms of the low key and the high key. You can take these corner nodes, drag them around, and uh, assign them to these. And I guess this is the velocity range? I'm not really sure. Um, but uh, you could do that. Uh, or you could just go up here and change these things manually. It's still a, it's still kind of a long process compared to... A polyphone, but it's one that we gotta deal with, and I don't think you can also use tab because that just goes to the next thing, which kind of sucks. And I can't use arrow keys. Maybe I can. Yeah, I can't. That's okay though. We make do with what we have. So, if your bottom sample is C3, obviously make it 48, and then just go up from there. So this is going to take a little bit, which is why I'm only doing uh, 11 samples, because doing a video like this with all the samples would take fucking forever, so I don't want to do that. I really don't know what these other parameters mean, other than the velocity range, but uh, it, it should be fine. I think this is just the amount of bytes that uh, the sample is, which usually should be like in the... 50,000s because that's how it works. That's like five kilo uh, three kilobytes, so it's not much at all. Nope, forgot to set this range. Um, the lowest note should be it should have the lowest key range being zero, so that it fills up this entire space. Um, can be useful if you want like lower notes, uh, like that are only a few notes below the one, like it's just out of reach. Yeah, you can use that uh, to reach those notes.
And unlike with the polyphone, you don't got to worry about the left and right channels because I think it does its stereo. Um, so top note, make it 127 because that's the max key range. And this should now work. Hmm, there's some stuff going on there. I don't know what the issue with that is. Uh. Mm. Oh, I see what the issue is. All right. So, again, main thing is just keep all these other settings the same. You've got to make sure the root, the low key, and the high key match up with each other. Of course, unless the uh, it's the first one or the last one. Last one should have it just be uh, the low velocity. I mean, max velocity, max key thing, lowest one should just be zero. Uh, so it's a similar again. It's a similar process to sound fonts. It's just I guess slightly easier in some aspects, and it looks a lot nicer. It's all contained in one thing. Now there's again if you have if you're just using the trial version of FL Studio, it'll only be this portion that you have to worry about. But if you do have the full version, you can go up to sample, and then you can actually set loop points. Um, to do that, you would go up to this thing here, loop type, click that. And uh, I use sustained because it's like you want to have it be sustained, you know. And uh, to set the loop points, you would drag over these flags. You would zoom in. And I found out the easiest way to do this is just to find a peak like this. Match it to the very middle of that. And find a peak that is pretty much almost exactly like that. That'll work. And just line it up with that. And it should kind of work. Yeah, you, you can tell it's obviously being looped, but it's not, like, clicky. So that's how you loop with stuff like that. I would usually do this for longer samples since uh, shorter ones are kind of fickle. Um, so I just keep it. Okay, and then final, uh, there's a couple more things you can do with this. I would just honestly play around with these, you know, enable effects. Yeah, a lot of stuff you can do with Direct Wave. And then finally, once you're done with all that, you just click this folder icon and save. Saves as a WD, DWP, name it whatever. And now we got our DWP. So that's that's basically how you use Direct Wave. Uh, you can have several different uh, kinds of shit here. Like you have a total of 16. Um, and if you another thing too, if you have the full version of FL Studio, you can import sound fonts. But when you do, you got to make sure you put on monolithic mode on uncompressed. Else, when you open back up the project, it's not going to be there. So we have a Tankman sound font here. They're like, oh, but I want other people to use it. Okay, uh, how do I go about that? Well, first you make the top note that. Like t top key range 127, low note 0. Okay, and then you just save it as a DWP. Cool, now we have that. So that's that's basically direct wave. Uh, there's a lot you can do with it, it's kind of underrated in this community, I guess, mainly because a lot of people don't really know how to use it. Well, now you do. So, uh, thank you for watching this. If you want any other things, just let me know. I'll probably find a way to make a tutorial for it. Uh, yeah, uh, you guys have a good one.